Welcome friends to video 2 of this series where we'll be building an Instagram clone in Flutterflow and Superbase. So in the previous video, we actually created the UI for our home page over here. And in this video, we'll be creating the UI for our profile page over here. So this is the screen that we'll be trying to create in Flutterflow now. So we can go back to our project and we want to add a new page. This will be a blank page. So we'll create a blank and for this page, it'll be our profile page. So now that we have a blank page, let's just delete this column first and delete this app bar because we no longer want that. So let's take a look at the profile page that we're trying to create. So firstly, it contains the name, then it has this profile image, the number of posts, number of followers, and the number of people that we are following. So in our Flutterflow project, in our root page widget, we want to add a column. And inside this column, the first thing that we want to add is a text, and this text will be the username. We also want to center this text, so under alignment, we'll just click on center align. And we also want to change the team text style to title medium. Let's also add some top padding of 32. So the next thing that we should add is this row of the profile picture, the posts, followers, as well as following. So how we can do that is we can first add a row widget. Then inside here, we can add a circle image as the profile picture. We can decrease the diameter to, let's say, 80. Or maybe we should give it 100. Then within the row, we also want to add the number of posts, the amount of followers, as well as the number of people the user is currently following. So you can see that there is the number here followed by the name below. So to do that, we should actually add individual columns for each of those. So we can add a column widget and under this column widget, I'll add two texts. So the first text will be the number of followers or the number of posts, rather. Then the second text will be the posts, which is the name over here. So let's also add some style. Instead of body medium, we can give it body large, perhaps. Um, maybe body medium is fine. But for the font weight, I want it to be semi-bold. And for the posts here, I can change it to label medium. Maybe we can decrease the font size to 12. So now that we have this, maybe we can increase this font size to 16. Then we can copy this column and duplicate it two more times. So this one will then be followers. And this one will be following. Now we want to add some padding between all of these widgets over here. So we can click on the row. If you can scroll all the way down to item spacing, we can give it an item spacing of 24 or maybe 32. You can give it start and end spacing as well. So 24 and 24 on both sides. Let's also add some padding to the row, top padding. So we can give top padding of 16. And for the circle image, maybe we can decrease the diameter a bit, 90. All right, looks good. So next will be this, the name, description, as well as a website link that the user can create. So it's basically the user's bio. So I also want to replace, not replace, but rename this row to, let's say, main row. Okay, so now let's work on the bio. So the bio will be a column. And inside this column, we will have the name, the description of the user, as well as any links that the user wishes to have. So we can just make three text widgets. So the first text widget will be the username. The second text widget will hold the user description. 
and the final text widget will be links. And for the final text widget, we want to change the text color to a sort of blue. For the username, we also want to make it bold. So for the font weight, we'll change it to semi-bold. And we also want to align all of these text widgets to the left. So we can click on the column itself and under cross axis alignment, we'll choose left. And currently you can see that the column is not taking up the whole width of the screen. So to solve this, we can actually wrap the column itself in a row. So now the, that the column is wrapped in a row, the row takes up the width of the screen, and then the column is able to left align itself to the left of the screen. We also want to add some padding to this row. And actually, since we want to add the same padding to the whole column itself, instead of adding the padding to the row over here, as well as this other row. As well as having padding to this other row. What instead we could do is we can go to the parent column and actually just add the padding here. All right, so now we can add some top padding to this row. And we also can add some padding to this column so that we have some space between all these widgets. So you can go to item spacing and let's add a padding of 8 or maybe a padding of 4. Let's also change the style of this text, this user description text widget. So instead of body medium, we'll choose label medium. Alright, so next we will add a horizontal divider. So you can just search divider and it'll add a line over here. But you can see that now because we added padding to the column itself, this divider does not, this divider is not able to span the whole width of the screen. So we should actually not add the padding to this column so that the divider is able to span the whole width of the screen. And instead we'll just add the padding to the main row itself as well as this row over here. Let's also add some bottom padding so that we have some space between this column as well as this divider. Alright, so next we'll have this sort of tab view. You can either select your posts or your stories. So for that, we create a new widget and we can search for tab view or tab bar. So basically what this tab bar widget does is that it allows us to have multiple tabs on the page and when you click on each of the tabs, when you select one tab, it brings you to the corresponding tab page. So for this, we don't need three tab bars, we only need three tabs. We only need two tabs, so we can select the third tab and we can delete this. So now we can see that we only have two tabs now. For the first tab, we can add an icon and for this icon, it will be sort of this grid icon. So we can search grid and let's just select this one. And we can delete this text over here as well. And since there's some space over here, we can click and toggle this align horizontally to be on. And now it will fill up the center of the screen. So if you click on this, you can add margin to all sides equally. So this is equal margin. So if I click on 12, or if I choose 12, then, then this icon over here will have a margin of 12 on all sides. So right, left, top, and bottom. You can do the same thing for tab 2. So we don't, we'll get rid of the label text then we'll add an icon and this icon will be sort of a profile profile picture icon. Then this one will 
Yeah, I think this one is good. We can align horizontally, and for the icon size, we'll change it to 32. And we can also give it some margin. So currently, if I try to click on one of these tabs bars and select this tab, you can see that there's this sort of indicator over here, which I don't think I want that indicator. So I can go to the tab bar widget itself. And if I scroll down under properties over here, you can see that there's a tab properties with a tab bar style for the indicator. So you can play along with this and try to see which one works for you. I think I'll just click on indicator and I don't want this indicator so I'll just give it a color of transparent. So I'll remove the color and I will set it to completely transparent so that now there is no indicator and but it depends on the darkness of the image. So when this one is clicked it's darker and this one becomes a sort of gray. But if we want to accentuate that difference what we can do is we can go back to the tab bar you can see that under label properties we have some selected colors and unselected colors over here so for the unselected colors if you just want to make it a bit less gray you can give it a lighter shade of gray over here so now yeah you know clearly which tab you're on all right so for this page it will be just a sort of a grid view of posts so what we can do is under the tab page over here we have a column, but we can just get rid of this column. And instead, we want to add a new widget and we'll search for grid. So we want to select this grid view, which will create multiple grids. And what this grid view widget does is that it basically takes in multiple posts or multiple components and it just displays them in sort of this grid view like format over here, which is exactly what we want. So if I try to add maybe a container you can see that if I maybe if I increase the fill color to sort of gray and I duplicate this container yeah it just creates this sort of grid view like view so I'll just leave this there for now for your reference but we will be changing this later yeah if you also want to decrease the margins between these you can click on the grid view widget itself and we can access and change the grid view properties over here. So we can change the cross axis as well as the main axis spacing to decrease the margins over here. So maybe let's change it to six and eight. Six and six. All right, yep, I think that's looking good. And last but not least, we also want to add the bottom navigation bar onto this page. And we can click on the root profile page and we can scroll down to navbar item properties and we'll just show on navbar. So now we have a navbar over here. For the label, we'll change it to profile. And for the navbar icon, we'll change it to a person. So we we'll just choose this one. We can now also get rid of the home page copy page. So we'll just delete this. I also want to get rid of this row of white space, which the actual app does not have. So you can just click on the column and we'll add some top padding of 24 to push everything down. Yep, I think that's looking pretty good. Yep, so we're done with this tab. And for this other tab, we can just copy our grid view over here and we'll paste it inside this tab bar page. Oops, we can, must first delete this column and then we'll paste it. So yep, that looks good. All right, so that wraps up for today's video. In the next video, we'll be creating the edit profile page UI. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next video.